Um, can I tell you, so I'm, I'm really curious for your perspective on this as a former PFA chairman. I'm sure people would have seen that Gordon Taylor, the uh, chief executive, has been on the end of a letter endorsed by more than 200 high-profile current and former players over in the UK, essentially calling on him to step down. And the messaging of the letter, I'm reading here from The Guardian, uh, you may have seen here that Ben Perkis, PFA chairman, so your former role, has called for an independent review of the PFA. And they say, we're back in his call. We'd also like to call for a fair and democratic election of a new PFA chief executive throughout our careers. We've never had a vote. And this has to change. The PFA needs to be open and accessible to all. Every player should know when and how to vote. And the PFA must be run by people willing to be open, transparent and democratic. We call for Gordon Taylor to step down and allow the PFA to modernize and evolve. So he's been involved... Gordon Taylor since 1978. It's an extraordinary amount of time for him to be in this role. He is the highest paid trade union boss on the planet. Extraordinary thing, really. 2.29 million at the moment, 3.37 million after bonuses recently, and he's now coming under severe pressure. I mean, I've certainly seen a few things um, thrown his way. I, I get the transparency in a democratic election. There was certainly criticism on um, Perkis's part, or well, actually Perkis made the point that they have 50 million in the bank and it was um, written over the weekend. Daniel Taylor pointed out only 100,000, for instance, has been spent on studies into dementia and there was a study promised a long time ago which never came to fruition either. And I've seen a critique of him for taking 700,000 sterling in a settlement with News International for being the victim of phone hacking, as opposed to maybe exposing a scandal that probably affected some of his members. So I've seen those things um, floating around. It all kind of boils down to just the sums of money which he's earning in, in one shape or form or another. Um, your assessment of this situation, your assessment of Taylor's career and where we are? Well, first of all, career, um, it's extraordinary what he's done for that union. Um, that union, when you look at it, what it was when he took over, and to see the wealth that he's developed for that union um, was, has been absolutely incredible. Uh, the deals that he managed to do for the union. Yes, there is a lot of money in the various funds. There are, when I was PFA chairman, there were four funds. What year was um, that, sorry, Pat? The, uh, I think it was 92, okay. 91, 92, 93, that sort of thing. That territory, okay. Um, and it was just at a time, just when I was leaving, that the, the, the union rules were changing so that the chief executives had then to be, you know, elected every five years, I believe. Um, so it didn't affect my period of time there. That wasn't a necessity at the time, but since then it's been the case. Um, as I understand it, there haven't been elections. I, I couldn't tell you, having not been in the union, why that's not been the case. Um, when you look at what Gordon's done, you've noted a lot of the what would be seen as negatives, and I understand it. Um, don't forget the positives. Positives are absolutely extraordinary. Um, why is that money in the bank uh, for the union? Now, most of that money is not in general fund. It's not allowed to be used in the general fund, or well, it certainly wasn't in my period of time there. It was only allowed to be used, you know, first for accident insurance. It was allowed to be used helping with pensions, helping with players who were struggling, education fund. The education fund's absolutely massive. The community fund, money's put into community projects for the union has been absolutely incredible as well. So the works that they have done for members, ex-members, etc., is, is extraordinary. You go and ask any players about they've had dodgy knees, have fallen in hard times, you know, people with drug dependencies, alcohol, you know, gambling, you name it. Go to the PFA, they'll try and help you and put you through some sort of help. So there's a whole list of them, right? I could tell you them all and I could sell you them all. It's kind of by the by. If you're going to be running that organisation, you need to put yourself up for an election and when that election comes, you say, I've done this, 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 and this, mm. and I'm the best man for the job. And if everyone, everyone agrees, and you think you're still doing a good job, then you carry on. Mm. The one thing I would, I've not read that letter, but the one thing I would disagree for the, the bit that you wrote, uh, you read out about that letter, I'd take one line out of it. And the line out is, he must step down and let it go. No, no, just put yourself up for election again. Mm. That's simple. Mm. That's good. And if the vast majority of the members impressed with what he does and there's not a better candidate for the job, then he gets the job again. So the idea of stepping down is pushing it. Um, each one of those points that you made there um, and, and in themselves, I uh, understand that I'm not going to, I'm not here to give Gordon Taylor's point of view. He, he can do that himself. He's big enough and intelligent enough to be able to do it himself, particularly the financial arguments were the money that he's paid 
Mm. However, there are a number of individual things that you say that you've got to look closer at that dementia thing. You've got to look a lot closer. Was that really a PFA thing or was it the FA that put the kibosh in that? Um, look at that closely. Okay. Also, have a look at some of the stuff that was, um, you have to look at dementia sites and Alzheimer's sites, talk to anybody within those areas and ask them what they feel about the situation just now. How, if it's, could, we are told it's definite that, that the head and the balls caused that. Well, not if you ask those professionals. There's no evidence, absolute evidence for it yet from those professionals. Now, it may be, may be the case that it is, and more work and more time and more money has to be spent finding that out. But don't take it as given it's an absolute set. So each one of these things that has to be given to, thrown out there with lack of knowledge is a, is a dangerous thing. Mm. Um, but I think this is a good thing. The, the, I think the, this is a really good thing. No, I accept that point. The critique, and I, I mean, whether the FA put the kibosh on it or not, the critique, I think, on the dementia situation is that no work has been done. And Jeff Astle has had Alzheimer's a long time now. This has been discussed for a long time now, and nothing was done. And even if the FA put the kibosh on it, then arguably the PFA should have come out strongly and said the FA are putting the kibosh on this, and we're going to conduct our own study, and that is going to be done because it's so important if there's even a risk. And I think that is a fair critique of them. I mean, the money thing—it reads terribly, a terrible optics. Can I, can I, can I yes, you can, of course. Yeah. The, the Jeff Astle thing I was so sad, and I talked to Chris Sutton recently, who's very upset about that. His mm. father has dementia as well. Mm. He's a sent forward. He headed the ball a lot. When you look at the percentages in the population and the percentages of footballers at the same age who have dementia, mm. it's the same. Yeah. So you don't, don't, it may well be that that was the cause. But the thing is, we don't know yet, and you're right. But that's my more point. study has to be done. Yeah, my, my, my point is, my, yeah, my point is on that one, I think it's difficult for him to uh, put away the argument that, well, actually, we don't know very much and we should know a bit more, and arguably you should have been at the forefront of that. Yeah, I think that's a I, difficult one for him. Yeah. And, uh, and to be honest, I think that's something that should be placed before Gordon, you know, and asked him. I've actually talked to him about it in the last six months or so and asked him about it, right. and he has got a number of arguments back about it. Um, and I think it's not my position to make that argument. I think yeah. it's Gordon's position to make that argument. I'm not there, I've not worked there for many, many years, yeah. so I can't make that, and I don't want to make that argument. I would like the PFA to come out and say, look, this is what we're doing. But one of the things he does say, the delicacy of is that people do get personal about it, mm. because he feels that you know anyone who's suffering that, and I do feel so much sadness for anyone who is suffering, their families, and they blame it on football. Yeah. Um, and it, so you can't necessarily have a normal, straight, factual, you know, purely logical debate because it sounds heartless. Yes. But in actual fact, in reality, you kind of have to have that because don't chase something that's not the case. So yeah, let's hope monies are put that way. By the way, one of the, I, I've, I can't even give you a reason why more monies haven't been put into that. I would love to know why. Yeah. Um, and it's up to the PFA and Gordon specifically to come out and say why. Because the Times in 1985 called him undoubtedly the most impressive administrator and negotiator in football. Um, so, like, I'm just trying to work out, I mean, I, I read the letter from the, the players and it seems to have big support, you know, that he should step down as opposed to stand for re-election. Step down and Ben Burkis is certainly, the chairman is certainly saying that things need to be, um, you know, um, reformed quite dramatically. Aside from the, the huge amount of money he's earning, which I can see people find uh, distasteful for obvious reasons, I'm struggling to kind of see where this is all kind of blown up from or what, what's gone wrong here. I don't know how well or otherwise the, the association is working. I think there's, there's, a, there's been a, certainly a breakdown, as I understand it, with uh, the chairman, right. Ben and uh, Gordon. But that happens. Yeah. Uh, I had a breakdown with Gordon. I had a disagreement. Surprise, surprise, it was about his contract. Okay. And I disagreed with them and I fought against it. I felt that some of the monies that were being paid out, and uh, particularly what was going into the pension scheme, there was a possibility that that actually might bankrupt in time the union. Because if you get a final salary of the pension cap, he felt that the monies would be made within football that would cover that. It's kind of right, let's be honest about it. <laughs> they did get a lot of money. Yeah. But as ever with these financial things, it's more complex than that. Because I have to tell you, I've mentioned these four funds where the money goes into. Mm. The money is for a long time, and I don't know if it's still the case, but I think it is. That money is only allowed to go into three of those four funds. Okay. The final fund, which is the general fund, was where Gordon's remuneration came from. Now, there you've got a problem. You may have 100 million, but if you've not got it in the right fund but can cover that, you've got a problem. Yeah. So that's something that, again, Gordon has to talk about, answer, discuss, uh, and be open. 
about mm. because you know he is the, the union chairman, he, he, the union chief executive. He runs the union. He is to a large extent the union yeah. and has been, and he's been incredibly successful. And by the way, to your point, yeah, best administrator that the that in football at the time, he was astonishing to work with. I've never worked with anything like anyone like it in my life. He would walk in before a meeting with all the big wigs. I mean, I, I was on the PFNCC, which was the Professional Footballers Negotiating Consultative Committee, a big word for everybody, mm. FA, PL, leagues, referees, everything. Gordon would walk in and that mean and utterly control it, purely by knowing when to speak, how to manipulate things, how to get the best for his members. I don't think many people out with those meetings would have a clue how much he'd done and how brilliant he was at it. He was astounding at it. And there was no doubt in the period in the 80s and the 90s, the FA would have took, taken him in a millisecond because what he could have done for them could have been incredible. Is that right? Okay. Because in reading the coverage, there's a real sense that one, well, the, the greed has been talked about, but two, there is a general, well, he's not, he's, is he that impressive a performer? You know, I, you know, it's very interesting to get that perspective because in interviews, I wouldn't say he blows you away as a great no, intellectual doesn't. or a charismatic type. No, he doesn't. No, and uh, he kind of hides it, not hides it, he kind of keeps it down, he tones it all down. Right. Uh, but his understanding, uh, I mean, as a committee man, I've, you know, I've been in all sorts of committees all through the years, my, mm. all through my life, and mm. be it FAs, be it in, you know, in Scotland and England, and variety. I mean, I've been a pension scheme trustee, you name it, lots of different charities, you name it. No one's come close to his abilities, not even close. The guy would have been a brilliant, um, I mean, I mean to me, if you ever wanted an agent, there's your man. I tell you, okay. he's done quite well for himself, okay. as you can tell. He's, he's quite astounded, astounded at this thing. There's no reason why I should have no benefit to get yes. from God. Um, no reason why I should say it, but it's just that I've seen he was quite astonishing in those situations. Okay. So then, I guess in short, uh, lastly, why, why do you think within the game, surely that you know that news might have travelled, you might have talked to somebody and somebody talked to somebody and it would get around in the game that Taylor is pretty sharp and he's actually, you know, he, he's, a, he's a very brilliant operator. Why do you think within the game there's this groundswell of opposition? It's a great question um, and I could only be guessing at okay. it. Um, I don't think he goes out and sells uh, himself and the union for what they do um, greatly. Okay. Um, if you do go out and sell it, people are saying you're paping over cracks. You're just trying to, you know, take people's vision away from what they, what they want to talk about, which is his salary. Yes. He'll he'll then he'll roll a whole bunch of numbers about the monies that have been put in, the amount of new hips and new knees, and help with people that have had all sorts of difficulties. And this goes back to players who, some of the greats in the history of this game, who've fallen in hard times and have been helped. Mm. Um, he could go into all of that. I used to be in the, when I was the management committee and chairman. Every you know every month we would have you know they high about hundreds of these pleas for help. Mm. And you deal with them all, and you'd help the vast vast majority of them.